All right, good evening, everybody. We're going to call the Rainham Conservation Commission meeting of February 7th, 2018, to order at 5.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to jump right into formal. Mr. Dooley, if you could read us in, please. All public hearings and meetings heard by the Rainham Conservation Commission on Wednesday, February 7th, 2018, at 5.30 p.m. in the Rainham Veterans <coughs> Memorial Town Hall, Donald L. McKinnon Meeting Room, 558 South Main Street, Rainham, Mass., are relative to filings <coughs> and joint hearings and or meetings under Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Rainham Wetland Protection Bylaw. Okay, uh, we're in the formal section. We're going to take a couple things out of order just to make it a little bit more easier to handle housekeeping-wise. Uh, we're going to start with the Notice of Intent, Eleanor Road. Map 12, parcels 185 through 189, Aspen Properties Holding, LLC. <coughs> tear sheet and green cards. Do you have the, uh, the advertisement? Ah, uh, yes. The tear sheet, the green cards? In the Town of Rainham Local Bylaw, the Rainham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, February 7, 2018, at 5.30 p.m. in the Donald L. McKin McKinnon Meeting Room in the Rainham Veterans Memorial Town Hall at 558 South Main Street, Mass. On a Notice of Intent filed by Aspen Properties Investments, LLC, the applicant proposes construction of a single-family dwelling that would be located zero feet from a bordering vegetated wetland. The applicant also requires review and approval of a delineated vegetated wetland line in the associated resource areas. The property is owned by Aston Aspen <coughs> Properties Investments, LLC, 60 Court Street, Taunton, Massachusetts, 02780, and is located at Map 12, Lots 185-189, Eleanor Road, Raynham, Massachusetts, 02767. All right, if you could please state your name and firm for the record. Sure. Uh, Nick Dufresne, Farland Corp, Civil Engineers and Land Surveyors, uh, here tonight representing the applicant, uh, Aspen Properties Holdings, LLC. Um, I actually have a couple of the members uh, here with me tonight as well, uh, Chris Coit and Tim Seifer. Uh, so the proposal uh, in front of you tonight uh, is located on Eleanor Road. Uh, these uh, properties were purchased by the applicant um, from the town of Raynham, and they're looking to construct uh, one single-family house. Um, all the way on the right, as you see here, uh, it's 42 by 28. Uh, it'll be serviced by town water and sewer. Um, due, to, due to the proximity and location of the wetlands on this property, um, <coughs> we are proposing some fill of the wetland, um, just under 5,000 square feet, 4,700. Um, we've shown a uh, erosion control um, during construction uh, around the exterior of the, of the work, uh, and then to be transferred over to a post and rail um, permanent um, limit a work fence uh, around the property. Um, we've shown some replication area along um, Eleanor Road, um, just as some uh, potential uh, area that we, we may be able to replicate. We have it at uh, one and a half to one as it stands right now. Um, we did not uh, submit a, a detailed uh, replication uh, plan at this time. We kind of wanted to come here first and, and discuss the project and um, if it's uh, looked favorable, favorable upon, uh, we can definitely provide that as part of a condition, or uh, if we need to continue and get that to the commission, we can do that as well. Um, that's pretty much the uh, the basis of the project, and uh, we can take any questions if, if anyone has any. Azu, have you had a chance to review? Mm -hmm. um, you, um, way back, uh, actually, I had been asked way back to look at it, uh, to think about what what's going on. The area that is, is fairly filled uh, with a lot of yard waste, um, debris, and 
they basically followed they basically followed the um, the toe of slope in the front, uh, <coughs> of the fill. So the the wetlands, it's a lot actually even where they're proposing their replication, the wetlands is actually more towards the street than what they have. So uh, and then the other thing too is <laughs> the commission requires a minimum of 25 foot no disturb. Um, for all intents and purposes, you're trying to you're trying to build a house in wetlands, and um, the wetlands delineation it's not representative because it's the uh, soil that follow <coughs> they basically follow the uh, edge of the fill, and uh, we need to uh, they need to do a little bit more soil investigation, upgrading what they're where they're calling upland. You'll find that the wetlands it's actually more. So, um, it, it's it's really uh, one of those sites where I cannot, I gotta be quite frank, I cannot see how, in my view, the commission, the part I like is that I don't vote, you guys do the voting. But in my view, I don't see how you can make this work. <clears throat> Do uh, any of the commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Well, I'm, you know, based on what Azu said, I'm not sure that the project can go forward. How much oh, should what go land are you going to uh, fill? Uh, 4,700 square feet. If I could just address uh, Mr. Azu's um, comments, yep. the, uh, the wetland line, I mean, was delineated um, by a, a botanist, um, Environmental Consulting and Restoration, <coughs> uh, actually provided the line for us. Um, I'm not, I'm not certain. I understand how the wetlands could be further up a slope. Um, typically, the bottom of a slope is where where the wetlands would occur, even if there was maybe some historical fill. Uh, there, it's not wetland anymore. Um, so I do, I do think the the wetland line is accurately shown. Um, and to the point about the 25 foot no touch, um, I would argue that this this lot doesn't qualify for that as it was created prior to the the bylaw um, of the of the commission. So have you had a chance to read our bylaw? I didn't. So I have it right here also. <coughs> so it says this provision shall not apply to lots that have been created by a deed or plan recorded in the Bristol County Northern District Registry of Deeds or the Registered Land Division of said Registry of Deeds prior to the adoption of this bylaw. Right. So any parcel, so who, who's the own, who owns this lot right now? The applicant. And when was this lot purchased? Um, approximately three, four, five months ago. So anyone prior to 2013 when our bylaw was adopted is grandfathered in. Anybody that is after 2013 is subject to the 25 foot. Well, not anybody. It's when the lot was created, not no, no. not when it was purchased. Well, even uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may interject, even yeah. if you follow that line of reasoning, the lot is being changed. They're combining five lots, so that's a modification of existing lots. We haven't combined any of so, the lots. They were they were sold as 10 separate lots. Uh, so, so they're proposing. So that makes, separate that lots, makes it even harder. Right? Because now they're proposing, the argument is okay. They're separate lots, so you're proposing replication in other lots. So uh, it, it other doesn't lots wash. That they own. So yeah, you, know, you just you just said by your own statement they're separate lots. Right. Currently, right. So you're 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 creating a restoration area on parcels that aren't even associated with. Lot number but are still 189. Owned, but are still owned by the Under applicant. The same ownership. I, I don't buy that logic. Yeah. So still a modification of existing lots. But anyway, that be, being added as it may, obviously we cannot go and issue an enforcement order, cease and desist order for the fail has been ongoing on the property because nobody <coughs> lives there. So just because there's a continued activity of filling, 
on the property does not. There's no where in the statute nor the attendant regulations that said, oh, because you have an ongoing fill, therefore that preserve that ever negates the fact that you have a wetland resource. They cannot demonstrate in that area under the fill that they do have non-hydric soils. So that's one of the parameters that you're going to look at. And the, clearly the vegetation that is there underneath that fill is still there. Uh, there wouldn't be any so, vegetation on so, the fill. So, so what I, of course there is vegetation, it may it's decomposing or not. Okay, so if you expose it and they look at, <coughs> look at, look at just how they, they basically they just follow the ground over here, no, no soil sampling. That's part of your delineation requirement. Not just to uh, follow the bottom of the slope. We, we, we can get soils from the from the botanist, I'm sure. Um, I just I just think that if it's we don't know when that fill was placed there, and in the act it's called historical fill, it has to be the wellings has to be where they currently are now. Uh, we have no idea when that fill was put there. If the neighbors have been dumping debris there for years, we don't know. All we know is where the wetland line occurs now. That does not create dumping of that fill does not create an upland. It was never an authorized fill. Obviously, the commission knew who was doing that. You know, issued them an enforcement order, a cease and desist order. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any of the commissioners have any other questions? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, would you mind reading the uh, bylaw again? Absolutely. I'll read the whole section. So, Section 7, Part G in the Rainham Conservation Bylaw that was enacted in 2013, there shall be a 25-foot no-activity buffer around a bordering vegetated, vegetated wetland <clears throat> for all construction activities, including but not limited to grading and brush dumping. This provision shall not apply to lots that have been created by deed or plan recorded in the Bristol County Northern District Registry of Deeds or the registered land division of said registry of deeds prior to the adoption of this bylaw. So yeah. if you are, as a new ownership are creating a new deed after 2013, you are subject to this part. Right, but we, I wouldn't make the argument it's when they were created. The lot was created, when, it when the lot was created. I understand that you're trying to read into the gray area, <laughs> but this is not gray area. This is the intention of this paragraph in the bylaw. Okay. I was here when it was written, and four out of the five members in this commission were here when this bylaw was written, and that was the intent of this paragraph. It wasn't to read into it, or when the lots were established 40 years ago, it was to allow current landowners that would be grandfathered in if they had a lot prior to 2013. Any new house lots, new divisions, new ownership, then they are subject. That's right. Yeah, we can answer. And, and incidentally, Mr. Chairman, incidentally, if you were to lay aside temp for a moment for the purposes of discussion, if you would lay aside the bylaw, the Wellness <coughs> Protection Act says the commission may allow. It doesn't say the commission shall allow. So even if you work in strictly under the Wellness Protection Act, you are not required or obligated to allow filling of wetlands, even, even if it's one square foot. And when you're creating this much activity here, that would, if you were to build over here, that would encourage, there's no way you're going to limit this person in this fence here. Let's be practical. Look at what they're creating here, they're proposing a uh, yard. Effectively, all this land here will be filled. Effectively. Well, we, we've clearly shown the limit of work that we yeah. intend to, to work up to, and, and like I said, stated post and rail fence be, be placed around that area so that there's no further um, development past that point. Um, One other question. How come you only took the contour line to the fence? What's beyond? What's the contour beyond the fence? They're connecting to the... Um, it continues to, to slope down uh, to, route 40, uh, to Route 24 in the back there. Um, we didn't continue it back there because we don't propose to, to do anything with it. There's no reason to, uh, it's as far as our limit of work has gone, to the <coughs> post rail fence proposed. It's the, it's the 
most minimal amount of grading that we needed to for this construction is what we tried to do is keep it as 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 tight and minimal as possible. Any other questions? No. Refresh my memory. What's the replacement <clears throat> when you fill wetland? What's the is that the proper replacement at one and a half? To uh, repli replication. Yeah. So, well, the Wetlands Protection Act says one to one minimum. Okay. Okay. And and if you look at the preamble of the current regulations, it says avoid. That's one. So avoid. If you cannot vote, minimize, mm -hmm. you, okay, and then replicate. They're not avoiding, they're not minimizing. Okay, so, I, so, so this is not like saying that you have an actual contiguous upland area and you, uh, for example, have a limited access where you got a huge upland area in the back and you just want to Cross wetlands, yeah. things like that. <coughs> but it's not about uh, it's the uh, the regulations. All the ad were not designed to encourage filling of wetlands. Yeah. To make it clearly, as it stands, it does not meet <laughs> any requirements. I, I, so I would, you're I would basically agree. asking, let us fill wetlands in order to create a building area. That, I, I, that I is agree. not a, that is not an incidental <laughs> filling. Yes, I would agree that um, it, it obviously in all cases possible to avoid any type of fill. Um, with this particular lot, there is absolutely no way to avoid it um, to to construct. Um, so that you know is our is our hardship here is that there's no way of doing this without the little bit of fill that we're that we're proposing. <coughs> um, if if the commission would so so like, we could continue this. Um, maybe get the botanist here to, to discuss the the boundary of the wetland line that. That he delineated, um, and, and also look into the, the into the bylaw, uh, like you stated, uh, and also uh, do the soils. My concern, and this is just mine only, I'm only a commission of, of one of five, is that since enacting our bylaw, we've been very strict on the 25 foot no touch, mm. and reading into in between the lines to what we want it to say will go against everything that the bylaw was in, was established to do, which will open the door for other projects to say, hey was done for this, why can't it be done for this also? Again, I'm only one of five, and I'm going by what's in black and white. I'm not interpreting it any other way except for the way it was written. Yeah, and, uh, I Mr. Chairman, <coughs> last week, when, I, when they made the argument about how uh, it's a hardship, well, would you not think that you would do some dilig due diligence first? So this is a self-imposed hardship, because they do not own the property. They you know, bought the property as yes. And they, they, they said, well, I just say it's a caveat emptor. Oh, I, by I, everywhere. I agree. I mean, we, right. we purchased it through auction. That's yes. Right. So, in good faith and in good faith, we so we that a, so the argument of hardship actually does not hold mm -hmm. because this is self-imposed hardship. If you are going to use that line of reasoning. Do any of the commissioners have any other questions before I open it up to the uh, audience? Good at the moment. Okay. Uh, right. Is there anybody uh, in the audience uh, like to speak on this? I do. If you, could, if you could just come up to the mic, please, and state your address and your name for the record. Uh, just, no, just, just come right up to the mic. Yeah. State your name and uh, address for the record. My name is Sean Stewart. I live on 109 Eleanor Road. I'm the homeowner. I've lived there for 16 years, and I can attest, and I have some stuff. That soil is wet to start. That area is extremely low. That this lot that they propose to build on is going to be a good six to eight feet below the street. So they have to put a lot of dirt, a lot of fill. That's going to create, so the road goes this way, that's going to push the water back on my lot. I'm Could sorry. You tell me on the map there, point to where your residence would be. Um, I'm the last house. I'm 109. I'm not quite positive. To the right. Yeah. So you're to the right over this way? Yep. I'm 109. Okay. Oh, I would oh. need the lot that abuts. The proposed house. Okay, the other one just to the right. Yes. Okay. So, Thank you. in my backyard, I went to put a pool in in 2010, and I was um, 
I got the process and I have all the wetlands and I'm, I have pictures and I can show you that area is extremely <coughs> wet and it's low lying and I believe it was filled approximately 40 years ago because when I, I got the whole education I had to meet with the conservation officer and I learned quite a bit that area is wet so you have Eleanor Road I'm the my house is the last house this lot is I'm telling you six to eight feet and they are correct there's a lot of neighbors and stuff who do put their leaves mm -hmm. in the front so it's a false but it's a huge drop and then you have 24 which is also higher and there's water that drains from behind the highway and I I have it all here from when I put my pool in so whenever it rains like right now there's water everywhere and it stays and that lot near me if you look there's all covered it, it's full of water and there's even a stream in there I don't know where they got this I know that I saw their people out there with the flags I'm afraid they put a house they raise it one foot all that water is going to come back at me because the street is sloping this way and all that water has been draining in there for God knows how many years I just worry about my my basement doesn't flood I have pictures I can show you every all the grass around me is dead except my backyard because I'm the low point and it's always wet and this wetlands right in the corner of my lot I don't know how to read this fancy map but there is no, a I, I remember your lot because I did the pool okay pool inspection thank you yes okay, so I remember it now yes I had a I had to put hay and yeah okay. the commissioners any question for the uh, homeowner you are more than welcome to come in my backyard to see the slope. Yeah, I'm an open invitation. I'm Thank just you saying if you if you need to. Yeah, I've been out there. I did the um, the um, pool Sorry. inspection when they okay. he came forward in yeah. 2010. Yes. Um, so I, I familiar. Yeah, with the area. And that was why my question for the rear <coughs> of the lot, because um, it is in class close proximity to 24 what are the different elevations right between so the highway tw and right 24 is higher here? and so is across the street so if you look across the street at that new neighborhood those houses are a lot higher so all the water coming is down. coming down Queen and there's um like the water is being yeah. drained there's an actual stream back there i don't see it there but i have it on on it comes from underneath the highway the other side of the highway it goes from King Street then goes yeah. to uh to Barron's I yeah. think Barron's yeah. and Queen Circle it's mm -hmm. all high on that side of the highway too yeah <clears throat> I don't know where the drainage for uh, 24 goes <clears throat> it's parallel to the highway if it goes under the culvert yeah okay all right is uh are there anybody else in the audience for this uh, property do you want any of these photos if you could leave them, that would be great. Sure. Right into your sure. Yep. Pass them down. Yeah. I'd like to see yeah. So I just had some of my stuff from 2010 and some modern pictures of that's what it looks like. It's always wet. And I took that on a dry day. Are those copies? Yeah. You can have them. They're not your originals, are they? No, they're on my phone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sort of picture. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'll just leave that there. That's my yeah. name. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I could yes. this is just uh, <coughs> one of the issues that uh, the neighbor did speak about um, as far as directing water uh, towards his house. On the right side, we have graded it so that so um, it would create a swale to bring water from both lots down the side to the back. So there wouldn't actually be any water uh, pushed onto the, the adjacent property. Um, it would be swaled to direct it to the rear of the property as it currently does now. Okay, do any of the commissioners have any other questions for the applicant before I ask him his, uh, his pleasure about closing or staying open or continuing? I'm, I'm good. I, I think I've seen enough. Would you like to continue or would you like to close the hearing? Uh, yes, please, if we could continue and maybe get a little more information for the board. Uh, okay. For the next meeting. Um, do we have, do we have, uh, do you have anything else? Yeah. Okay. Do you have the paper for them to? Continue. No, just open it. Just open it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have the paper for them to fill out? We don't have to do it. Okay. No, right. Sure. Right. All right. So the applicant wishes to uh, continue. To um, how much time do you need? Hearing's open, so you let me know when you want to come back. Do you have a so hearing each month? We have uh, twice a month. So probably not the next <coughs> hearing. The hearing after that. Okay. What is that? March. March seventh. 
Okay. March 7th. Thank you. I'll obtain a motion for a continuation. The motion. Motion continued to March 7th. Second. And the motion is a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. So, sir, in the back, we're going to be continuing this hearing to the uh, same time in this room on March 7th. Uh, yeah, uh, it's completely up to you. The hearing is still open. It's continued, so it's so it's so it's still open to the public. Let's say things are a little different. Could I ask for a continuance if I need legal representation? The continuance usually comes from the applicants. Okay. So, so it's so if you have a vested interest in what's going on with this project, it's in, up to you to make sure you're here. So that and it's not going to get any other. Yeah. Sort of you won't get any other thing in the mail. That's there won't be any other advertisements in the, in the paper. March seventh. All right, um, ne next, notice of intent, Broadway, map three, parcel 90A, Aspen Property Holdings, LLC. <coughs> no, because it's... Uh, <laughs> well, Do you have uh, the, the tear sheet and the green card for that one? Magnifying glass. <laughs> In accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, in the Town of Rainham Local Bylaw, the Rainham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, February 7, 2018, at 5.30 p.m. in the Donald Lovell McKinnon Meeting Room in the Rainham Veterans Memorial Town Hall at 558 South Main Street, Rainham, Mass., on a notice of intent filed by Aspen Properties, LLC. <clears throat> the applicant proposes construction of a sim single family dwelling that would be 5.3 tenths feet from a bordering vegetated wetland. The applicant also requires review and approval of a delineated vegetated wetland <coughs> line and associated resource areas. The property is owned by Aspen Properties Investments, LLC. 60 Court Street, Taunton, Massachusetts, 02780, and is located at Map 3, Lot 90A, Broadway, Rainham, Mass, 02767. Thank you. I know it's a formality, but if you could state your name and firm for the record again. Sure. No, Nick Dufresne, Farland Corp. If you could just please give us a... Uh, a rundown of uh, what the proposed project is? <coughs> sure. Uh, this project located on Broadway uh, is another property that the applicant has purchased uh, from the town of Raynham. Um, <coughs> this one is, is a little unique. Uh, there was an existing um, foundation on this property. They're proposing to use that existing foundation um, and simply construct the, the dwelling on top of it. Um, initially, we had thought we were going to be able to um, get away without any grading on this property. Uh, but once we got a report back uh, from our structural engineer in regards to the existing foundation, uh, there is frost protection that needs to be provided on that. So we have showed some uh, proposed contours. On the right-hand side, you'll see we've um, shown a retaining wall to keep any of that grading outside of the um, wetland boundary. Uh, and again, we've shown a, a post and rail fence around the entire project um, to act as a permanent uh, limit of work. Um, We've also, <coughs> excuse me, have some uh, roof recharge uh, shown uh, for the for the dwelling, and water and sewer uh, from the town will be uh, servicing the, the house. Uh, have you had a chance to look at this plan? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this this proposal here is sort of similar to what you have on Eleanor Road. The only difference is. Now, this one here is grandfathered because you do have a prior use that existed on it. So the 25 feet will not apply here, and they can do the work that they're proposing here. How does, uh, it, how does it apply here if, the, if, if technically the landowner, if the property owner has changed in the registry of deeds? Oh, no, 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 but the foundation is already there. Oh, I understand. Right, yeah. and the foundation, they're showing you where the wetlands is, you cannot change that foundation to make it to be 25 feet. So 
So what they're doing here, unlike Eleanor Road, is they are avoiding and they're minimizing. In other words, by putting that wall, they are not affecting the what they're minimizing the impact on the wetlands. And the, you see what I'm saying? You, you can't you can't move the foundation, even if you move the foundation to the um, to the north, you will be violating zoning zoning setback. Okay, so it is what it is. Okay, the commissioners have any uh, questions, comments, concerns? Here. Uh, yep, there are some contour lines shown on the on the plan. Uh, we do need to bring in some some fill around the foundation. Just up to that uh, barrier wall, right? Just for the frost protection, correct? How long has the foundation been in the ground? I'm not totally sure. I think somewhere from early to mid '90s it was put oh, in. All right. There's the, there's the wall here. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. sitting yeah. empty. Right. All right. I just have one kind of technical question. Has the Structural integrity of it been approved by the building inspector? We, we've consulted with a structural engineer and we'll provide that letter to the building inspector, but this was the first step. But we do, we have had that evaluated and that's what the need to bring the fill in to meet the frost protection. But we are prepared to provide that letter to the building department. I, under, I understand Azu's point. My only question, Azu, is and I know we're kind of juggling between departments here, mm -hmm. that if for some reason that foundation, if we approve this as is now, mm -hmm. and for some reason the foundation is no good and has to come out of there, are we putting ourselves in a bind by approving it at this time, or would it just simply be a major modification and they have to come back to us? No, the, uh, no by virtue of the uh, greeting that they're showing, if they are changing the, as long as their work is within that footprint, they are not going to be changed. And even if they they will take it, they will take out the foundation. Yeah, the elevation will still be the same. They have to so put, they, they have put, to put the foundation in the same one. place. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Take exactly. it out. Right. Put it in right. a new foundation. Right. So even if they have to do <coughs> so that, so they're not changing any. Will, they're not expanding in exactly. any any direction. Correct. That's correct. All right. Okay. Yeah. Again, just from my point of view, the way I read our bylaw that was written, no activity. But again, I'm one of five. So um, just to give you a heads up, usually one of our standard conditions is when we put a post and rail fence up, it's at the 25 foot no touch. And again, with this property here, it's tough to do that when there would actually be a house in the middle of the post and rail fence. Correct. Um, so. <laughs> could decorate the post and rail fence to the living room. <laughs> what number Broadway is this? Uh, it doesn't have an address. The house next door is 1539. The house next door is 1539? <coughs> Correct, to the left. Uh, lot 90. I'd personally like to do a, I don't know what the other commissioners think, but I'd personally like to just do a site visit before I make my decision. Yeah, I agree. Do the commissioners have any other questions for the applicant before I open it up to the audience? Mm -hmm. And then we can discuss yeah. uh, um, um, uh, either a close or a continuance. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. any other questions for the applicant? And none. Is there anybody in the audience for this property? Anybody in the audience? I usually get yelled at because I forget to ask the audience. <laughs> so I want to make sure. Is there anybody in the audience? All right. Um, so we have some concerns. Some of our commissioners have some concerns. Sure. But you as the applicant, have it, it's up to you if you want to close or continue. It's your nope. right. No, nope, we have no problem continuing so the members can go out and take a look and feel satisfied. Okay. Um, I think I we could do this one in two weeks if that's okay with it's we would, a, a, again the the hearing is open okay. so it's completely up to you you could do it in two as weeks you could do it in, in four weeks you could do it in four weeks it's
completely up to you. The only downfall with possibly doing it in two weeks is we never know with New England weather. There could be three feet of snow out there, and we won't be able to see anything, and then we would have said we should have come in four weeks. Yeah, we can, <laughs> we can do two weeks, and if, if um, like you said, some conditions come up that, uh, that the members couldn't make it out there, we can, can ask for a continuance again. Okay, so in four weeks, not two weeks. You're saying two weeks, but you mean well, the same night as the other meeting? No, let's do it in no, no, two weeks. No, yeah, meaning, meaning head. Okay, you want to do it? At, so, all right, so that is? 21st. Okay. All right. Um, one of the commissioners would like to make a motion to continue to the 21st of this month. The motion that we uh, continue this notice of intent on Broadway to February 21st. Yes. 21st, next meeting. Sorry, next meeting. <coughs> 21st. Okay. Second. Okay, there's a second. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes. <coughs> All right, next we're going to go into a notice of intent, DP file 269-0948. Uh, uh, zero North Main Street, Frank Rosanis. Good evening. Do you have the uh, tear sheet, please, in the green? property on King Street for the Costa family. Uh, Mr. Thompson worked with us, my firm on that. So, and every so often I work with Mr. Thompson so that I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Good. To, thank you for disclosing. Do you have an issue with Azu being present for? No, I do not. We can proceed then. No conflict. In accordance with the provisions of Mass General, uh, Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Wetland Protection Act, the Rainham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on February 7, 2018 at 5.30 <coughs> p.m. at the Town Hall, 558 South Main Street, Rainham, Mass, 02767, to consider a notice of intent filed by Frank Rosinas to remove fill and mitigate wetland impacts at zero North Main Street, Rain of Mass. Okay, that's it. Please state your name and firm for the record. My name is Ken Thompson. I'm a botanist and soil scientist. Okay, and if you could just give us a quick overview. We, we kind of already know what's going on, but just for the public at home, a we small, have a, a lot of viewers. A small area of uh, fill that's been pushed out off the farmer. Don't know how it got there. It consists of probably four large logs and a pile of dirt that was pushed off to one side. A smaller area is pushed to the right but didn't make it into the well. It's sitting on the berm of the, uh, of the farm road that goes out to the back uh, sand pit area. Um, we plan on just going in there with a backhoe, scrape it off at the flat part of the blade with the fingers, and then we'll just shovel off the rescue back to the original soil. Excuse me. And then uh, replant the area and stabilize it with an annual grass. The wetland is a, a large red maple swamp. We're at like the top of a flood. If it ever flooded to that capacity, it would be like coming to us. There's no real flow down through the area. Uh, it's a, a closed canopy red maple swamp with a very, very dense layer of uh, sweet pepper bush. Naturally, I think the sweet pepper bush would come back on its own because of the rhizome way it grows. But we'll plant like eight, and then I want to put down some like winter rye that just doesn't introduce more seed to the area because it is a totally shaded out wetland. I mean, you can see all the way through this area. Uh, Azu, have you had a chance to look this over? Yeah, for, well, I'm, I'm just going to say hallelujah. We finally got a response today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was. I have to step in, man. That was my fault. There's been a lot of personal things that's happened in my life. What's the intent of doing this? What's the plan going 
moving forward. We'll go out there and excavate it out now, yep. and I'll come back in the spring and plant it. I'll throw down some seed now, but outside of the mitigation here, what's the long-term plan for I the have property? No idea. Okay. I have no idea. So you're just resolving the issue resolving of the, the enforcement okay. order. Yeah, the unauthorized fill. Right. Okay. It's in with the it's in the heritage area. It's yep. in a flood yep. zone. Yeah. Um, so heritage is in their letter states if anything else happens, come see us. <laughs> So I know this was a, a while ago, and I, I honestly can't remember. I'd have to go back and look in the minutes. Um, but I know trying to be proactive in stuff like this, because um, eventually, in a couple of years, you're going to need to go back in and, and trim it back again. Well, not yourself, but somebody's going to need to go back in and trim it back again. I was thinking I'm going to throw those logs across that <laughs> Because I went out there when I came down to file this, and there's a pile of brush sitting on top of the fill right now. So the neighbors are definitely... Oh, no, I agree with that. But the landowner has a right to go back into his property. Mm -hmm. We're not denying that. Um, I know myself personally, instead of having to come file every two years to cut back the roadway, I'd like to see a maintenance plan that states that. So in two years, when they're cutting back a foot or two on each side, there's no big to do. We have to refile mm -hmm. and come back. It's already a plan in place. And that's something that we've been doing in the past couple of years, trying to trying to save the, the property owners a little bit of of hassle and ha you know come back to file with us mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how the other commissioners feel about that I would try to work with the landowner on that I mean, it it makes sense you know he wants to keep using that pathway to go down to well, access the rest of his yeah, property his nice upland uh, if he's yeah. never going to use it ever again then then it's this is better. fine but I don't want to I don't want to yeah. restrict you know the landowner from going on back of his property or having to go back there and check on his property and he drives down the road and scrapes up the paint on both sides of his vehicle <laughs> to get down there either. I understand. So I that's my only concern that. because what would happen is if there's no plan in place, if there's no plan in place, then we're in the same boat we are in a couple of years. Can we just file a plan with the commission after the, after the meeting? I well, mean, I'll, I'll sit down and talk to him and come up with a plan. Upward. My, maybe I'm wrong, Azu. My suggestion would be not to close this and come up with the maintenance plan and then come back in a week or two? Well, no, you can always file a maintenance plan at any time. At, at any time. Yeah, okay. yeah right. because that that would be in his interest. Okay. Uh, uh, to, uh, I didn't do know that if we thing. had to tie it together because we have no, a no, because No, no, this is in, in response to your enforcement order. Yeah. Right. So, so you, you, you're not obligated to consider that. They have to come back with, with if they want to make it part of this, then they can do that. But right now, you are segregating the. This is the only thing. Uh, yeah, this is the only yeah. thing that's before you okay. to bring the property into compliance. Yeah. Now yeah. he will go back and advise his client. Say, hey, this is what the commission has have, has suggested. So here's if my question, Azu: Would they have to refile in order to submit a maintenance plan? No, it depends on what that maintenance uh, entails. If it's just a uh, cutting, then you don't need to. You know, they can just you can approve that maintenance plan in a correspondence form. Okay, I just want to make yeah. sure that yeah. we're trying to yeah. cut out some in steps here to not make it any more tedious than it needs to be. I used to do any more cost large cost if you just yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, no, I understand. I used to do large pipeline projects, so 20, 30 mile long. So we've writ I've written a lot of these maintenance plans, and I think I could write one that would meet your needs. You know, you know, trimming back. You know, trimming annually. Those every, you know, biannually. Uh, one or two feet uh, before things bloom, that kind of stuff, you know, so it's done in the off season right. and not All in full swing. So then we don't area. have to go back with another enforcement order because you Because we saw a machine down there cutting down the size of the path. But there's a lot of activity in this area. I, I see vehicles in and out of here all the time. I don't know if they're hunting back there or something, but. Uh, doing something yeah, else a lot back of there. Yeah. Up there. Going in there, I mean, I went down there, the snow was on the ground. And a lot of trucks have been down that road. It's a wide road. Yep. So it's maybe part of the wide. maintenance plan would be to put some type of that was suggested restriction to keep people out. I'll talk to the owners. Maybe I'll just leave a chain up. <laughs> Give you guys the key. Give the fight about the key. Yeah. We don't need it. There's um, nothing out back there. I, thought, I mean, I do have the master key. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that master key. So I ask uh, Gail on this here. Since we're, this is a notice of intent, should the maintenance plan be in part of, are we going to issue an order of conditions? Oh, definitely going to issue an order of conditions. 
Uh, it was an issue of some kind of order. So shouldn't the maintenance plan be part of the order of conditions? Well, like Azu said, it can bring it in, and you just do it in correspondence form. Okay. The order of conditions, and he could probably even put in there with acceptance of a maintenance plan or right. something like that. Okay, all right. It, put and, <coughs> and if it's not... Then a maintenance plan needs to be submitted. Yeah, I mean, that was my only thought, okay. was it had to be that submitted be with the opening conditions. Mine, not, mine, also, file. mine also. But he said he wants to go back and discuss it first, and like Azu said, you can do the order of order conditions. He brings the maintenance plan back, you can review it, and then accept it and do it in the correspondence yeah. and just put it in here. Um, my question is... How long would it take you to do the maintenance plan? Before you write the order of conditions. So they're, they're going to have, you know, I can go just go find a, a standard forest plan, forest maintenance road plan that, you know, in Western Mass, there's a lot of forestry work going on. And they have these standard plans, and I'll adjust it to meet your needs. Basically, there's going to be, you don't want any soil disturbance, any plant material cut at the top of the road and on the edges has to be removed from the area moved to an upland area he can't cut a tree down on the edge you know what I mean it's rooted so he could probably side branch but it's pretty much been side branched already it's a pretty good corridor if you look at uh, the first picture in the report it's a pretty wide open area okay and just get it to a point where he's moving things down and I'll try to get him to put a chain across that thing Keep the neighbors up, Mr. Chairman. I would I would suggest what Azu said. Let him. Let's do the order of conditions because we have a time limit on that. That maybe this plan doesn't come in before that, that time limit. Um, we have to issue within 21 days. So okay. um, do what Azu said. We'll get the order of conditions going and then get it signed and well, we'll that's the maintenance plan. Well, and if he gets it in before the order of conditions, that would be fine. Well, well the way I was leaning, and I, I, I may be wrong, is. If we leave the hearing open, the applicant doesn't have to come to the next meeting, present the maintenance plan between now and next meeting. We'll have it on the agenda, and that way we'll accept the maintenance plan, close the hearing, and issue the same night. Whatever you wanted to. Okay. I just have to talk to him. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense to the other commissioners. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense to the other commissioners. You know, because if that's all we need, everything looks great in the plan. We just need to know what you're going to be doing going forward. Mm -hmm. So in two years, when you're out there with a brush hog on both sides, we can say there is a maintenance plan on file. In case one of us or all of us aren't here in two years, the new commissioners aren't going, hey, what's Wait, going on? What's going on? They can go right in the file and notice that, that there's okay. a maintenance plan okay. already in there. That makes sense. Goes. Okay. Also, you guys have, uh, I saw details that I need double hay bales. That's going to take up half the area. Um, can so I just put a waddle around? Yeah, so waddle? when, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the waddle. That's one, that's a way we, we went a little Yeah, but you're not even going to be able to do that because you're going in with the machine, scoop it out, take it out, and yeah, then you're just going to. It'd be, if I, <coughs> I'll fit it in there. And if it, you know, basically I'll shovel the edge. There's, there's so little. I don't I even believe you're going to need that. Okay. Well, I'll put one up after I'm done then. How's that sound? I'll make sure it's in the dry. Because all he's going in is there's a pile of dirt here. He's going to go whoop, scoop, out, done. Yeah, so we'll pull it back toward the road. Yeah. Pull it back, and then I'll get in there with some flat shovels and just clean up that area, make sure that all the materials are there. Yeah, it's such a small piece. I don't think it's going to be needed. Yeah, yeah. it's like 12 yeah. by 20. <coughs> he has to put a small waddle just to prevent some erosion. That's fine. There's no slope involved. So no. That's fine. Yeah, it's no. like the right. extent. Of, if it's, if yep. that whole area did flood, which I don't know if it does or not, but it would be like the top corner. Okay. All right, so does that sound like a plan? Okay. Well, we'll put it on the agenda for the 20, 21st, is that what it was? The 21st of February. 21st of February. As long as the maintenance plan's in here, we'll review it quickly that night. We'll have Azu review it beforehand. He'll say it's good to go. And then we just need something from him that that day or whatever, saying he wants to close the hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. So. All right. Perfect. Uh, motion to continue. Uh, we have a motion to continue to the 21st second. of February. We have a second. Any further discussion on the motion to continue? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next we have an issuance of an order of conditions, DEP file 269-09-4562, Locust Street, map 9, parcel 197-1, Brian Jolly. And this one has already been closed. This is just an issuance. Have we already done the vote to issue? Yes. Yes. We did? Okay. So we're just signing.
with the first ones. So they had a lot of chats. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody didn't make the agenda. They could have been interested in building on the property. The joints on the floor. All right. Uh, see you no other formal. We're going to move into informal. Gail, is there any informal? Um, no, sir. Okay. Well, other than correspondence? Um, yeah, we can do informal. We have nothing really informal. Okay. All right. Seeing no other informal, we're going to move down to general business. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of January 17, 2018? Motion to accept. Second. We have a motion to accept and a second. Any further discussion on accepting the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Bills? All right. Should be four there. Same thing. Yeah, one of them is a oh, that one's the covered on the. So this one goes to this, right? This environmental impact report. Okay. Okay, and this one here is on the cover, the bridge work for uh, Mass Highway, Mass, the bridge replacement. Where is that? Culverts, Freight Line, the new bit. Which one is that? Middleborough Line. Yep. They're making them all the uh, changes in the culvert. Is it for the train? Yeah. Are they uh, is, uh, are they both the train? Yeah, this one's for the train too. Could be. I can't see. I can't see too far away. <laughs> yeah, this is information about the train too. Okay. They voted to issue it. Didn't get it down. Gentlemen. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Don just just looked at it. He said she didn't think you it voted to issue that order of conditions. It was only closed the meeting. The public hearing was only closed. So so that's what I. That's what I, I thought uh, it was. Uh, that was. So I will revert back to formal <laughs> and look for a motion to issue. Oh, this way to. Oh, well, we just signed. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, a motion to issue uh, DP file two six nine dash zero nine four five sixty two Locust Street. Map 9, parcel 197, Brian Jolly. Motion to accept. Motion to we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. <laughs> it's official. Aye. We revert back to general business. Um, two correspondence that I have here. We have from the uh, South Coast Rail and MassDOT. It's a notice of uh, availability for South Coast Rail's draft supplemental environmental impact report. So if anybody would like to see that, that is here, and we in the office, and we also have <coughs> uh, from Mass Dot also, and this also goes to the uh, the Department of Transportation along with um, uh, the rail line. It's replacing some of the culverts that uh, are going to be done on that line between in the 3,000 feet that cross the random that we did uh, the walkthrough on. Right. So that is in the office also with some maps if anybody's interested in looking. <laughs> Any other further correspondence? Um, no. Okay. Site visits, uh, we did recommend within the next two weeks to uh, go out and check out that property on Broadway for Aspen property. So if the commissioners before the next meeting at your discretion get a chance to go out there. What, what was the address you were doing? 15, it's and the house to the right they said was? To the left of 1539. 1539. 
So if the I, I think it was 1539, yeah. I think when you go there, you'll see the, yeah. so the commission's the existing foundation. The foundation. <laughs> so if the commission's going to go out there at their discretion, that way we uh, yeah, do not have, have to file have to for an open meeting, meeting yeah. uh, for yeah. a special right. meeting. Right, right. Okay. Yep. Any other business? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to bring an uh, update you. Um, as when I put together a letter for 770 Broadway, I'm giving until um, February 23rd to come back to us. That was where the curtain factory was, the Rainham Depot. Um, we haven't heard from them since last October. Okay, and when are they going to be for us? Um, I was always looking for no later than February 23rd, 2018. At least get back to us and tell us what's going what's on. Ha what's happening? This, what, at least what's happening. We haven't heard, we haven't heard anything. I know there was some hold up there originally with uh, what the applicant had told to the engineer. And the engineer was a little bit behind, but then we haven't heard anything. Yeah. So, so their their thirty day extension is it's pretty much is way overdue. So, so we're gonna um, I'm gonna be sending that out tomorrow. Okay. Um, and other than that, that's all I have. That'll be certified to the. If you'd like me to do it certified, I will. That way we know they got it. Okay. Uh, yes. Good idea. Dave. You say we have to yeah. be told by the twenty third. Um, What's the in the letter? He had a. Um, we, we asked for a, a maintenance plan and a set of plans. So as we said, he has to have that to us. Um, the required filing must be completed and submitted to the commission office no later than the 23rd. Okay. So at least submit it to us by the 23rd and then we go from there. And that gives us a plan to have it on the March, on the first March meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought Ozzy was supposed to draft some language concerning. He is still working on that. The thing we talked about last month. We did make another little change um, instead of doing it on the Friday. We're going to change it to the Thursday right, because okay. Um, in, oh, case, okay, in yeah, case yeah. there's a holiday or anything on a, on a Monday, my agenda would have to go up on Friday. So okay. we're so trying to move it to the Thursday. To the yeah. Thursday okay. Said, okay. He said he was working on it. So okay. I heard yeah, it. That's fine. Okay. okay. All right. The gentleman from Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, anything else? No? Commissioners? Good. Okay. I'm ready to make my motion. You know, you can make your normal motion. Be motion. <laughs> motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Any discussion on adjourning? <laughs> well. There never is. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, um, Ayes have it. We are adjourned at 6.27 p.m.